It's time for Q2. It's already started, actually. I'm recording this on April 4th, which means Q2 started a few days ago, and I have been a little slow to get started, but it's never too late to set your goals and get your energy in the right place. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but today I'm gonna to be doing my 90 day reset. Some of it is already done and in progress or finished. Some of it is gonna to be totally reset today. So let's do it together. Welcome to our 90 day reset. So 90 day reset for me is usually a process of review look at what worked to what didn't work last quarter, what I want to change, what I still have going on, what are my obligations, just all of that kind of stuff. And then basically a tidy up and clean and get my home and spaces in the right place plan so that I can see, figure out like what's going on for this next quarter. What do I want to take on? What's my time look like? Just get that eagle eye view and then break it down into what are the exact tasks that I'm going to do for the quarter and then basically reset everything once the plan is in place. And those are really kind of the four steps that I always follow. So the first one is review. So let's talk for a minute about how Q1 went for me. So Q1, January, February, March of this year was super, super busy for me. So I had three, I ran three courses and one of them I created from scratch. So thank you to everybody who joined me in the very first ever round of Your Path Forward. That was a whirlwind getting that class together. And there's a lot of changes I want to make to it, but I've also gotten a lot of good feedback. So I created that course. I ran my HB90 course and I also ran Publish and Thrive. So in terms of courses and classes, it was very, very busy, but also really fun and successful and fulfilling. And I loved it. Then I was also working on my book. I had a lot of hope that I was going to get more done with my backlist, my Project Phoenix, which I've talked about before, just cleaning up all my backlist books, getting back into the process of publishing. And I had hoped that I would actually be able to finish Vanessa Shaw and publish it this quarter, but I didn't quite do that. So it is getting published here in Q2 though. So that is very exciting. We'll talk more on that later, but first thing that I do every time I'm starting to review is really what worked, what didn't work. Those are the two main questions that I always ask myself, like, how did the quarter go? Did I meet my goals? Did I get everything done? Did I feel overwhelmed? So I focus on the actual, like what got done? Did I hit my goals? But also, how did I feel? Where did I procrastinate? What was standing in my way? What was I struggling with? what's working, what's not working. That's kind of the, the always questions. And I have a series of questions that are in my HB90 planner that I use to follow through with that review, but it also helps to look through my Kanban board. So we're going to do that real quick. Uh, I am already in the process of creating my sticky notes for changing this out. And I'm a little bit late getting everything started because it's the fourth and I haven't reset my board. But I just want to remind you, especially here at the beginning of this video, that there's no magic formula to like starting on April 1st or starting on any specific day. It's really a matter of, you know, combination. When we think about productivity and hustle culture and getting things done and going after our goals, so often there's a lot of focus, even I focus on this, of like getting started when it's time to start. And that is helpful. But at the same time, productivity is not just getting things done and setting a plan for yourself. It's also like how you exist in your everyday real life. And so it's not just about discipline and motivation and having a clear plan, all those those things are important. It's also so much about what's going on in your heart and in your mind and in your body and in your spaces. And when we think of it that way in a more holistic manner, we can start to really think not just about what we're getting done, but about how we're existing and showing up in the world, what's going on in our lives, what's going on with our mental health, and all of those things play a factor. And we're all going to be in different places when it comes to that. Sometimes I have quarters where I just completely kick butt and I get tons of stuff done. And then there are other quarters where there's other factors going on that cause me to need to slow down a little bit. And it's okay either way. So whether you're in a season of your life where you're just like, go, 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 and you're feeling really motivated and you have a lot of energy, or you're in a season of life where you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much obligation. I hardly have any time to focus on myself. 
or you're in a season of life where you're like, I just don't feel like doing anything and I need to rest. It's okay either way. It's not like one quarter of rest or one quarter of getting a slower start is going to prevent you from hitting your goals. It's really most important to take a look at how you're doing and what you're going through and work off of the energy that you have on what can get done right now and celebrating that win so that you can begin to build positive momentum instead of comparing yourself to anyone else or trying to fit into some kind of box of like, I had to start April 1st or I'm a failure. It's like the more we can continue to talk about how it really is a holistic equation of energy, time, preparedness, like excitement, motivation, season of life, all of those things play a factor in our productivity. So it's a big part of why I'm starting a little bit slow this time and giving myself a little bit of time. And again, we'll talk about it more in a minute, but let's take a look at these boards. Despite the fact that it is super sunny outside and there's just so many gorgeous flowers, uh, it's the afternoon, so I don't get as much sunlight in this room. So I'll see if I can tweak it a little bit in post-production. But these are my three Kanban boards. And I like to do a visual workflow that goes from top to bottom. If you are new here, I will link an entire playlist down below called Kanban boards so that you can see what it is I'm doing with this if you're interested more. But I follow a system that I put together called the HB90 method. And it's a combination of different productivity methods along with my own sort of spin on how I like to plan. So basically I set three goals. You can put them all in one board. You can put them in Trello or Notion or wherever you want. It can just be a to-do list, but I always have one goal. That's a writing goal for my writing career. One goal that is for heart breathings, which is this channel and all my classes. And then one goal that's more like admin and personal stuff. So I did stick with that, although I'm tweaking it a little bit in Q2. So what we're going to do is we'll just go over how did I do this quarter? And really just if I back up visually, I think you can tell like I really did a lot in Q1. And at the beginning of the quarter, everything that I have that's on my to-do list for the quarter, all the tasks that I'm planning to do, all the projects I'm planning to do to help me hit my goals is up at the top. So you'll see by the end of this that all the sticky notes will be at the top for the quarter of Q2. But at the end of the quarter and throughout the quarter, everything I get done moves to the bottom. And you can see, I really almost got everything done. And I've never had a quarter where I finished everything. So this feels like super, super productive to me. Uh, and mostly because I actually did get newsletters going again this quarter. I got a lot of um, decisions made, coffee chat, Twitch streams, and I finished my book. <laughs> so that's kind of the biggest thing is I finished the fifth draft of my latest novel, The Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. And now I am in final read through mode, which is very exciting. I'm hoping to reveal a release date coming up for that in the next week. So be on the lookout for that. I would love for you guys to support me when that book comes out. But what didn't get done here is all the Project Phoenix stuff that I had formatting the books, uploading the books. I didn't get to finish all of my book signings. I still have several hundred books here in the house from people that ordered from me all the way back in November because I haven't finished Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. So they're waiting for that book. We also only got one of my audiobooks completed, which was totally my fault. So we'll continue those in Q2. And then I ended up canceling a coffee chat and Twitch stream last week. But other than that, I got almost everything done. So then the question is, <laughs> did I actually hit my goal? So I keep my goals here in I have printable, but I also have a digital one. So I keep this in the digital file for my HB90 planner. And my goal was, and I left, I left the money on, like sometimes I'll uh, hide the income goals, but I left it here just so you could see that I did not hit this goal. I will build momentum in my writing career this quarter by completing Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, Project Phoenix, which is my backlist project and making a good, better, best is what I often set like three goals. $10,000, $12,000, or $20,000 in income. I did not hit any of those goals. <laughs> I didn't finish Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, so I couldn't make any money off of it because I didn't actually publish it. And then I didn't do hardly anything for Project Phoenix. Just I made my plan for it and I set up my notebook, but I didn't actually end up having time to complete that project. So I didn't make more money on my backlist. So even though I made progress toward that goal, 
I didn't quite hit that financial goal. So I didn't make $10,000 on my books this last quarter. I made about $8,000 on my books this quarter. So didn't fall super shy of it, but it isn't what I wanted it to be. And I wanted to bring that up specifically because sometimes we're going to set goals that are out of our control. Like I hope to make 10 grand and we're not going to quite get there. Sometimes we're also going to do a lot of work toward that goal, but it's not going to fully pay off yet because we didn't finish it. And that's okay. And I think part of goal setting, especially when it comes to 90 days, is being okay when you know you made progress, even if it wasn't quite as big of progress or outward progress as you know it will be in the future. It's basically like I planted the seed. I couldn't control yet when that seed begins to sprout, but I know it's coming. And so I'm not worried about the fact that I fell a couple thousand dollars shy of my book income goal because I know it's coming. Like as soon as that book gets published here in the next couple of months, that money's going to come in and that work that I did in Q1 will pay off. So if you have been somebody who you set goals of like how many Instagram followers you want to have or how much money you want to make or whatever result or outcome and you didn't quite hit it, it's still not a failure, right? It's still progress forward. It's just that the timeline of when that goal actually created that outcome is taking a little bit longer than you originally thought. But that's still a win because the win is coming. So just wanted to point that out. So that was goal number one. We'll talk in a minute about what I'm changing for that. Goal number two, like I said, was super, super busy. I created a course. I ran two additional courses. I put up a lot of YouTube videos and so forth. So the things that didn't get done were I didn't put up a 14th YouTube video. So I just came a little bit shy of that goal. And then I also did not quite hit my enrollment goal for HB90. We had over 200 people subscribed uh, or joined the class, but it wasn't 220. So I didn't get to bring that down. And then I also did not do a craft book club, which is something that's still on my list, but it just didn't become a priority this quarter. But I got everything else done. So how did that translate? into my goals. So for this particular goal, I always set and word it the same way to continue to create quality heartfelt content for heart breathings in order to grow my impact and income. That's just my same goal every single quarter, which makes it easy because that's always my goal is impact and income and, you know, changing lives and all of that stuff. So I set different targets for that. So I have four different metrics that are important to me. So I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, which helps my impact and income. So I got to the middle version of this. So I said 68, 69, or 70,000 subscribers. And I think today I'm sitting at 69.6 thousand subscribers or seven. We're getting close, almost to 70. So if you're new here, please subscribe. Help me hit that 70K goal. Instagram, uh, 14,000, 14.1 or 14.3. And I actually did go 14.3, which is exciting. Then I have these other two hidden. So I had a course income, good, better, best. And I hit the best side of that. And then Etsy, I had a good, better, best. And I hit the better side of that. So my income uh, actually for this goal went very well. My income for my writing goal, not as good. Sometimes you're going to see that where you set goals for numbers or you set targets and you don't quite hit it. Or sometimes you go way above what you expected. And it's really just a way to measure is the action that I'm taking getting me the results that I want to get in my life. It's not a way to like judge ourselves of like, am I good enough? I'm still good enough whether I got 65,000 subscribers or 70,000 subscribers. I could have gained or lost subscribers this quarter, and it doesn't change who I am or what my worth is or how good my content is. It's just a reflection of is the action that I took leading to the result I wanted, but it doesn't have anything to do with me as a person in terms of being good enough or talented or anything like that. And I just want to continue to drive that home because I think sometimes so often goals become a way to judge ourselves of like, I'm not doing a good enough job. I'm not measuring up to where other people or where I should be right now. Or I'm losing too much time or I'm too old. Or, you know, we, we think those things about ourselves and we use it as a way to measure our worth rather than just measure whether the action got the result or not. And I think the more I'm able to really look at it as, is this action getting this result rather than Am I worthy of 70,000 subscribers? The happier I become and the happier and more positive I become, the more my goals begin to come true. Goal number three. So this one was more of a personal goal mixed with admin. So all of the light, light sort of green, 
ones, yellow green ones were admin, like meetings and things like that. And then all of the teal ones were more like goals of how much I wanted to read. It was kind of creative well filling, like losing weight or managing my energy, my sleep, um, reading books, uh, working on household projects and things like that. So all of the things that were left on this board were all things like that, that I really didn't have a timeline set for anyway. So this was a weight loss goal. I lost eight pounds, had put on here, I think 30 or something. So I lost eight pounds and the weight isn't as important to me as my energy and my energy is better. So I'm counting that as a win. I also read nine books while well, I read, I wanted to read 10 books. I read eight books this quarter, which is really good for me. Me. And we got shelves put up, we got closets organized, things like that are down here that got done. I also started a character on EverQuest 2, which is the game that I met my husband on just for nostalgia, but also getting me back to activities that refill my creative well that aren't for work stuff. And I put up here a goal to hit level 50 and I got to level 34. So I feel like it was overall a big success. So let's look at the actual goal. So this third goal, um, I'm calling this my quantum leap year because I have a lot of really big things I want to move forward in my life. So I said to begin my quantum leap year by focusing on my health and home in order to set a firm foundation for the year. So I was hoping to lose a certain amount of weight, but really I shouldn't have set this goal as a weight loss goal. I should have set it as an energy goal. But energy goals are difficult to track, except like checking your daily energy. But the weight loss isn't really as important to me. So I can't check that off, but I still feel like it was a win. Decluttered, organized home. I did make substantial pro progress on that. Creative energy is up. I'm writing every day. That feels really good. And I have definitely added healthier daily routines. So overall, Q1 was a roaring success. Like I didn't actually publish the book, but I got so much done. And probably one of the biggest wins for me is that daily morning routine that I have been wanting to get in order for a long time increasing my energy and feeling better, taking better care of my body, getting more sleep, drinking more water, those kind of things. I pretty much have a water cup with me at all times now. And I think drinking a lot of water has really been helping me, especially with my PCOS. And then in addition, I have established a morning writing routine with some friends of mine and it is really good. I don't show up every single day, but for weeks there on end, I was there every day and I'm hoping to continue that throughout this quarter because it has been very helpful to have that dedicated, non-negotiable writing time in the morning. So those all feel like big wins. So didn't hit every monetary goal, but I feel like this quarter was really, really good. So what else do I do to reset? Another part of the review process is really looking at my vision for my future and saying, is this still what I want? Is this still who I want to be? And I always love to make a vision board. So I'll throw in a picture of my current vision board. I love to recenter myself and just get clear on, okay, am I still headed in the right direction? Am I still like on the right track and feeling aligned with what I want my life to look like in general and the big picture of things? And really that was what I created that your path forward course for. So my HB 90 method is short-term planning, 90 day planning, but I always felt like I wanted to share my process for thinking longer term. So that's your path forward. And we will run that live again later this year, but I'm also going to be uh, changing the videos based on feedback and stuff like that. But I feel like that is part of the missing equation is uh, that long-term and short-term thinking so I do that process again, where I just sort of look at the long-term stuff. And this is also where some of my, uh, I don't want to say regrets, but like morning process or the difficulty of planning sometimes is because once I get down into the nitty gritty of things, I know and I, you know, I start future casting and thinking about all the possibilities and all the opportunities that are out there and all the things I want to do. And I start to really see and understand that there's so much I'm excited for, but I cannot do it maybe even this year, much less this quarter, because there's already too much on my plate. And that is a constant source of pain, <laughs> not like pain with a capital P, but just kind of pain with a small P of like, oh my gosh, the years are going by and there's so much I want to do. And it makes me feel like I got to make the most of every single day, which isn't realistic because we're human, right? So 
that is always a difficult part of the process for me, but I do love realigning and thinking about what the future brings. Cause that gives me a lot of good, feel good energy. So that got me excited. I already finished that vision board, went through my review process. I did, we did go through and clean up quite a bit. Like there's nothing's perfect. I don't feel like I'll ever have just like a perfect home, but we did clean out some closets. We put up some shelving that has been wanting to go up for a while. We um, got my bookshelves put together, but we didn't finish that office completely. So there was a lot of stuff that we did to kind of reset. Then I sat down and created my plan for Q2. I didn't really record the process of planning, but basically I just go through my HB90 planner and say, okay, what are my three goals for this quarter? They're always those same kind of three goals, but I am shifting the third goal a little bit, which I'll talk about in a second. And then once I have the projects figured out, um, I go through and look at my time and say, you know, which of these projects can I actually commit to based on the time I have available? Now, Q2 is going to be wild when it comes to travel. So I'm doing the Go Wild Planner Conference next couple of weeks, right? So that's just a few days and it's here in Dallas. But then I'm only home for like three days and then I fly to Colorado Springs for the Pikes Peak Writers Conference and then I'm only home for a week and I fly to Boston for the Subscription for Authors Conference and then I'm home for a month and we head to, or actually... Then I'm home for two weeks. We head to Raleigh. I'm home for a few weeks after that. And then it's InkersCon that I'm speaking at. And then we're home for a couple of weeks and then we're going on vacation. So the amount of travel, it's basically like every two weeks I'm on a plane or gone somewhere. And I'm having to take some deep breaths and realize I can't have as, I don't have as many task blocks. I don't have as much time because of that travel to get my goals. So I have to really zoom in and say, what are the most important things? Like getting the book finished, getting the book published. I want to start my room subscription. Those things are really important. Obviously I'm running HB90 again, cause I do that every quarter, but there might be less videos. There might be less live streams. There might be less Instagram posts. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but I have a plan and we'll see how much and how far I can get. But this, this quarter is going to be a little bit of a question mark in terms of how well, will I be able to manage my energy with all this travel and having PCOS that sometimes flares up and, you know, you never know how stress of travel is going to affect that. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I've also planned a little bit lighter of a quarter because of it. And that was very hard for me because I just want to put all the things I want to do a Kickstarter. I want to start, um, that book club. I want, there's just, there's so much stuff I want to do and it's just, there's not enough time. And it's an act of self-care and self-love to say, I am not going to overburden myself or expect the impossible. I'm going to try to be as realistic as possible while still following my dreams and staying aligned with that. So that's my, that's my overarching goal. You guys heard the review. We went through the review. Uh, I also am going to do a little bit of tidying here specifically in this room. So that is another part of the reset is planning, thinking ahead, and then also getting my spaces reset. So this room, this is basically where I do a lot of my recording. And so it ends up just having, like, I've always got lights in this room. There's always stuff on the floor. And then I am working on the April notebook challenge today. So I have just like tons of stuff on my desk here, but it's not overall as bad as it could be. Evie was playing with my little unicornos. So I'm going to work on this room specifically. And then I'm also going to work on my bedroom which feels honestly a little bit embarrassing because I just did like a March reset less than a month ago where I had to clean up my bedroom and it looks just as bad now as it did a few weeks ago because we've been traveling and there's been a lot going on. <laughs> so these two rooms, I feel like I just cleaned up last time. I'm going to clean them up again. So let's get moving.
it's so helpful to put that timer on because it's like once it's going, I just need to focus. Like I have a clear objective. Okay, I'm going to get this done. And it helps me move quickly and it helps me stay focused as long as I've got music or something else on. It's good. And then once it's done, I can say that's good enough and I can move on to the next thing, which the next thing is coffee. You can see we did put up this one shelf. We have another shelf to go there and then this is going to get organized this quarter. That sticky note to put up these shelves has been on my board, I think, for over a year. So that feels good <laughs> to at least have gotten one. We're making progress. But now I am going to make some coffee and I'm going to record my HB notebook challenge. I'm not sure if that will go up before or after this video, but I need to get it recorded and that should be pretty fun. It's two o'clock. Kids get home around 3.30 or so. <sighs> Gotta take a deep breath and just keep moving forward. I want to get my Kanban board set up today so that tomorrow is Friday and I'm hoping I can just get into routine at that point so I didn't lose an entire week of the first week of the quarter. But let me make some coffee and we'll talk about why I'm a little bit delayed. <laughs> So I no longer use any kind of sugar or sweeteners. Um, I just use heavy cream in my coffee and that that you saw is enough for me and for George. So that is really nice. Uh, and it's super tasty. Um, and you don't need any sugar. So cheers. This is basically what my desk looks like before I get ready to record the HB notebook challenge because I pull all my notebooks out from everywhere. Uh, I also have this notebook that I wrote down basically my review step or my 90 day step process. So this was supposed to be done earlier this week and didn't quite get done. So I do the Q1 review, set my goals, set up my Kanban board, set up my post-it notes, clean the house. Um, I also had some other little decisions and things that I needed to make and it didn't get done earlier this week. So let's talk about why I'm a little behind. So I went on a little hotel night. I call it right a Palooza last Thursday because I was getting so close to the finish, um, like the last pieces of my book that I thought, okay, if I can go away for a night, I can record it, which will be fun. I can hopefully finish the book or get really close to it. And then I can announce a release date. And I did record it and it will be coming soon, but I went to the Hilton Anatole, which has this amazing pool and everything. And so I was out by the pool on Friday morning and expecting to stay out. I was going to check out of my room and stay out by the pool most of the day. And I was really looking forward to it, had made a lot of progress the night before and had been up a lot. So I had only had like three hours of sleep and I hadn't eaten breakfast, which was a bad choice anyway. So I was vulnerable, emotional as it was, but excited for the story. And then my sister texted me to let me know that my uncle Hugh passed away. And, you know, when you are estranged from your family, I have been estranged from my family for nine years as of this summer. It is very complex and difficult when death or trauma or other things come up. It's, it's complex and difficult all the time. But there is a lot that goes into a decision, obviously, to cut someone who is toxic or harmful out of your life for the benefit of your own peace and your own mental health. And I was not expecting when I did that with my mother that I would lose everyone. And I did. Uh, I lost everyone but my sister. And so I have a very big family. My mom has five brothers and sisters and they all have three or four kids and then they all have kids. And so I grew up with a really big family unit and that has been shrunken down to just my little family here and then George's small family and my sister. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, it, it's a choice I made but it wasn't necessarily an easy choice. And it doesn't mean that I don't love the people that I spent so much of my life with. And uh, I tried to start my video of reset earlier this week and ended up crying a lot in that video. And I thought, you know, that's not the energy that I want to bring. And I don't want to pretend that I'm not grieving. 
But there's also this feeling when you are estranged and it was your choice to estrange or separate yourself from your family. There's this feeling of like, I feel separated. I know they're all together. I feel like I don't have a right to mourn someone that I was close to my whole life and that I loved very much and that had a massive influence in my life because I wasn't there uh, and haven't been there. And I, it's complicated. It's complicated. And I think that a lot of people don't understand. And it's also difficult knowing that, you know, my uncle Hugh was someone who I really adored, who supported me and loved me and believed in me and probably in that way helped me to become the person that I am today uh, and was that positive influence in my life. I saw him almost every day of my life. I played in his house. I played in his, his like even the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, when I picture the cabin, like he had a cabin on a, on a big pond where they owned a lot of property. I pictured that area, like how the, you walk down the hill to the trees, like it's a big influence in my life. It's like how I spent my whole childhood around him. And it is not only difficult to know that he's gone, but also difficult to think of the fact that, you know, when you separate yourself from a narcissist, what they say is when they can no longer control you, they control what others think of you. And that is very much the story of my life with my family is, you know, they all believe things about me that are not true but I can't defend myself without getting right back into that toxic environment. And it has been years and years of tears and difficulty and tough choices to sort of gain my own peace when it comes to this. And so, you know, you can go about your life and not think about it a lot, but then his death really brought back a lot of thoughts, not only of, did he even love me anymore? What did he believe about me? Um, that I'm, it, it just makes it very acute feelings of, of being separated from that family. And I know this is all very personal stuff, but I'm sharing it primarily because life is going to happen and we all have complex families and complex emotions about things. And we all have trauma and we all have, you know, the things that we're going through, the things that we've been through, the things that we're thinking, the things that have hurt us, we all have those things. And sometimes when we think about productivity and goals, we try to separate ourselves from those things. We try to separate ourselves from the way we feel or the things we're going through or the difficulties of life. And then we allow ourselves to feel guilty when something like a death or a trauma or a memory or a bad week keeps us from our goals. Like somehow we're not, we're lazy or we're not showing up for ourselves or um, there can just be a lot of thoughts surrounding that stuff of like, I'm running out of time or I, um, don't feel like I'm getting enough done or, you know, just any number of feelings that go along with needing to take a break from being productive. And so I wanted to be honest in this video because I know I talk a lot about productivity and I know I'm a very busy person and I love to be productive and I love to set goals and go after them. And I'm, I'm a number three Enneagram. I'm high on the like wanting to achieve things kind of spectrum, but there are simply going to be times where life happens and we aren't able to show up 100% the best version of ourselves or we just need to grieve or we just, things hit us harder than we expected and we're going to start late or we're going to have a need for rest or we're going to have a need for healing or we just don't feel like doing stuff for a while and we got to take care of ourselves. And so just know that even though you might be starting your quarter late or you might have had several quarters where you just didn't feel like going after your goals. It's never too late to listen to some part of you that says, okay, now we're ready. Um, or to listen to the part of you that says, not this, not this quarter. I'm just not going to set goals. I'm going to be kind to myself and I'm going to take a rest. So it has been a rough week or so for me, not only the news of his death, which, you know, I, I didn't end up finishing that vlog. I didn't expect it to hit me as hard as it did, um, but I think, you know, that whole bit, it just did. And I found myself like trying to make my way from the pool to my car without completely 
sob, beginning to sob. And like, I could hardly breathe just walking to my car. And then I just completely broke down once I got there. And I thought, I'm not even going to be able to end this vlog, much less record it and everything else. And then I had a good weekend with my family, a very healing time, you know, just here with my two kids and, and my husband um, celebrating Easter. And we took the kids to Great Wolf Lodge and that was nice. But then I got home and it was all this stuff on social media about the funeral and it's just been a harder week to record and be a hundred percent like on for social media, for YouTube or anything like that. And so I want to share those pieces of it with you because that's real life. And so often on YouTube and social media, we just see the like fun parts of the reset or the fun parts of productivity, but we don't see the sobbing what's not coming out of your nose in the car kind of moments. And um, you know, we don't need to see those moments, but sometimes it can be helpful to know those moments exist and everyone has them and we all start late and we all fall short and it's okay to start whenever you start and to be whoever you are. But there's that balance between not letting it hold you back, but taking the time you need. And that is all about really listening to your heart. So I took the time that I needed this week regardless of what goals I have, I took the time I needed to grieve and I'm still going to be grieving and it's still going to be complex and it still brings up difficult feelings, but I felt ready to move on today. And so that's what I'm doing. So I am going to turn this camera off and I'm going to record my notebook challenge, which if you haven't seen yet, will be up soon. And then we will reset my Kanban board. kids are home from school, notebook challenge is recorded. And since Evie's out here playing with some Play-Doh that she got from the Easter Bunny, I am going to finish up my sticky notes. I set my goals on my iPad, but then I track my weekly plans in my printable. So I'm a mix of digital and physical planner, but I got to have that visual workflow. And so I'm going to set up my sticky notes. I already have my purple ones and my pink, most of my pink ones are done, but I need to set up my goal number three next. So I'm going to do that. Then we'll talk about what my goals actually are. And another really cool tool that I just set up for visual workflow, which I am in love with. <laughs> So as we talk about visual workflows, I have joked multiple times in my life about how eventually this entire house is going to be like every spare wall is going to be a Kanban board or a calendar. And I have expanded on that dream a little bit. I saw these planner, um, these calendars from Calico Studios or something like that, uh, long time ago in an ad and they were colorful, but I didn't love all the colors, but I noticed recently that they have Navy and these are reusable and they're huge, like massive. And I thought about only putting up the quarter, but I ended up putting up the entire year. And so this is from the kitchen living room combo into our bedroom, which is also kind of the nook where my writing room is. So let me show you what I did. <laughs> So the lighting is not the best in this little nook, but how amazing are these? They're gigantic. Like here's my hand. Here's the calendar. They're really, really big. So they're not super practical for every room in the house or anything like that. You could just put up one month at a time though. They are coated paper. So you can, gosh, any, any room I go to right now, 
My husband is mowing. So any room I go to, I'm gonna get his noise and I apologize. So this is this is my hand compared. So these are coated, coated paper. So you can just, they're completely undated. So I just took chalk marker and put Sunday start. You could do it Monday start or whatever. And then what I have done is just marked when we're going on vacation, kind of color coded. Now I do have all of that information on the calendar that is in my other office, like the place where I record. So the purpose of this calendar is more than just put a calendar up here. This is where I'm also gonna be tracking my habits. Now, originally I had only put up April through September, but then I went ahead cause I just thought it looked good, but I, dated January, February, March for 2025. And I will put things as they come up. Now, when we get to January next year, I might take them down and put them somewhere I can actually reach them. But for now, what I'm planning to do in these little squares is to take my sort of erasable dry erase markers and put here what my daily steps, my daily water, and a check mark for every day that I exercised. And this will be just a way to track some of the biggest habits that I wanna have for my health where I can see them at a glance. So this is my newest visual workflow, kind of visual habits. And because it's right here, every time I go to the bedroom, every time I go to the bathroom in this particular part of the house, I'm gonna see it. Every time I come over here to write, I have my other like sort of visual, this is similar to a Kanban board, but it's basically where I'm tracking like some of my writing projects. And then I have my writing office in there. I am so excited to have this. And I just really do think it's, it's a little bit Bit laughable and extreme that I'm putting stuff on almost every wall in my house but if it makes you more productive go for it and you know to be honest like I know that there are I have so many notebooks I have multiple planners I have lots of washi tape I have things all over my walls but in the end the more we can lean into the things that are good for us as individuals like who cares what other people think like i never think everybody needs to have big calendars on their walls but if it helps you go for it if you want to have a spreadsheet for every single thing that you do do it if you want to gather data and that really makes you excited if you want to start a new notebook if you want to have colorful walls like we life is too short for us not to lean into the things that both bring us joy and help us be more of the person that we want to be. So if putting something on my wall helps me to visually remember, oh, I didn't put a check mark there. I need to do my exercise or it helps me to stay accountable because I don't want George walking by here every day and being like, gosh, three days in a row, she has an exercise. Though I know he won't do that. It's just an extra bit of accountability for me. Plus it looks really cool. <laughs> and every time I've been walking by here, I've been like, oh, I just really, really like that. And I have, um, I've been adding more and more plants to my house and I like the way the Navy looks with plants, not necessarily this color pot. So I might actually get a plant to go up on the floor here. Cause I think that would look really cool. So that's one of my latest sort of visual workflow things. Then of course we come into this room and I have just a basic calendar where I can just at a glance, see what's going on at any point in time. This, the only purpose of this is just a visual calendar so I can come in here and sort of spatially see how many months do I have until the next HB90 or when am I going to run this and how does it look it's like an eagle eye view right but over here uh, is where I have my Kanban board and I am not going to get a chance today to clean up this office the way that I wanted but one of my big goals for the day was I am going to reset my board so first thing I'm going to do is take down all of the done sticky notes and I'm going to put them into my little Ikea jar so that I have a visual representation of everything that got done in Q1. All of the things that didn't get done, those will go in the recycling for now. And I'm going to put up my new Q2 sticky notes. OMG, I also just got a package delivered and it's my son's new baseball team stuff. And look how cute. I cannot believe my Andrew is going to be 12 years old this summer, which means this time next year, well, a little bit summer next year, I will have a 13 year old on my hands, which is just, oh my goodness. So these are the little Ikea jars that I've been keeping my previous post-its in. But now that Q1 is done, again, I only have four of these. So they do have bigger sizes of this. And I thought I had one, but I have to go looking for it. But my plan is every year to put the four quarters of the year into these smaller jars and then the full year into a bigger jar so that I can keep track of them 
uh, of the progress that I have throughout the entire year. It's just a reminder of even when you aren't being perfect or you don't accomplish everything, there are things getting done. Every single one of these represents a step toward my dream life and my goals and an investment in myself. But I can't find that bigger jar, so I'm just going to put them in to this Ziploc bag for now. So every single one of these post-it notes represents a time when I chose myself, when I chose my future, when I chose to follow through over fear. And I'm proud of that. So now that the boards are clear, you can see that I have them each in three sections uh, with the scalloped washi tape. So the top is what I represents my to-do list for the quarter. In the middle, every week I put what I'm currently doing and at the bottom is where we collect everything that's done. So some people to have everything all at the top and have this massive to-do list for three months feels a little overwhelming. So if that feels overwhelming for you, something that you can do is you could make all of the sticky notes and leave them on here and then just take one project at a time or one week at a time or one month at a time and put it up on the board so that it doesn't feel quite so overwhelming. So that's one way you can do it. I've talked about this a lot, but just to go over it again, my process for planning after I do my review and reset and all that stuff is I determine basically what's on my plate for this quarter. What are already my obligations? What are the things I want to do? And I just make a massive brain dump list and I go through and prioritize all of it. Then I go through all of that stuff and I prioritize them and kind of group them into goals. And I decide what's the outcome I'm trying to achieve this quarter what will feel like success, what will move me forward in my career. And I set three individual goals. Now, because I run multiple businesses, I tend to keep them separated in that way. So writing, heart breathings, and then like admin type goals. And then I decide what projects I can do by looking at my available time for the quarter. So I take a look at overall, how much time do I have to work on my goals this quarter? And then I choose projects that I think will fit into that available time. And that process of matching my projects on my plate with the time I have available to work on it is what really is a game changer for me. And it's what a lot of productivity books and things like that skip because they're just like, here, determine what you want to do and break down your projects into tasks. But what happens a lot of times when we do that is we forget the equation of making sure that we have time to do all those projects instead of breaking things down and then ending up having like three years worth of work on our plate at any given moment, which feels very overwhelming. So my goal with HB90 is always to create a plan that feels super realistic and achievable, but will actually move the needle, which sort of forces you to say, this is how much time I realistically have. And here's what I think I can reasonably get done in that amount of time. Then I take those projects and I break them down into tiny little bite-sized tasks, like every chapter that I write, every single notebook that I set up, every single task, every YouTube video, it all goes on to sticky notes. Um, for YouTube, for example, I just have YouTube number one, YouTube number two, YouTube number three, but I could choose if I wanted to, to break that down into YouTube video one outline, video one recording, video one editing, if I wanted to, but I wouldn't really have space to put all that on my board and it would take a long time to write those sticky notes out. So what I do instead is I have them sort of at this level for my Kanban board. And then when it goes into my notion or into my daily planner, that's where I write out outline, record, and it and so on. So I break them down even further into bite-sized tasks in my planner and in my Notion dashboard. So that's kind of how this works. So everything that I put up on this board is a task that is a piece of a project that will lead me to my goals for this quarter. And so let's get it set up.
cards are set up. My goals are in motion. Every single thing on this board is a task related to a project, related to a goal that will get me toward my dream life, that will earn me lots of money, that will get more subscribers, will help me have more impact in the world. And I love how empowered I feel once I have this up here because it's so much clarity. And for me, a lot of my motivation comes from clarity. It doesn't come from just like, I wake up every day feeling motivated and excited. It comes from clarity of where I'm trying to go and what I need to do to get there. It's so helpful to say, this is everything I'm gonna do over the next 90 days. I know I have time to do it. I know these are all things that are gonna move me toward my goals and I have clarity and I can just start executing it. That makes all the difference. So what are my goals for Q2? I mentioned before that I always have the same goal for heart breathings where I just have the goal itself and then I have four metrics that I use to see if I'm hitting that goal. So I decided for Q2 that I'm gonna do the same thing with my writing goal because this last quarter I didn't hit my income goal and that was the only goal I set. So that goal didn't really reflect all the work I did. So I've been struggling to come up with the right kind of outcome. So I'm just going to do the same thing with this goal. So to have fun and build momentum in my writing career by focusing on community and creativity, I will measure my success in this goal by aiming for, and then I have four targets. So the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, three, four or 5,000 sales. I don't honestly know if that sounds realistic or not. It could be more than 5,000 or it could be less. And I don't know. It's been three years since I released a book. So we'll see how that goes. It's out of my control. I want to start my Ream subscription, which is a subscription that I'll be um, doing that's monthly, kind of like a Patreon, but for stories. So I want to aim for 250, 500 or 1,000 subscribers. Then I want to come back to that income goal, five, seven, or $10,000 in sales on my backlist, in addition to sales on Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, and then community growth of one, five, or 10% across all my social media. So it's a growth goal, it's an income goal, it's a sales goal. It's got lots of things under this one umbrella and everything that is up on this board, which is a lot, this is definitely my biggest goal um, in terms of where I'm spending my most task blocks. Um, a task block is a 30 minute period of time, kind of like a Pomodoro, and that's how I tell uh, how much time I have available for the quarter. And I have significantly less task blocks available this quarter than I have in a long time. So I don't know if this is fully realistic. We're going to see how it goes. But these are the metrics or the targets I'm aiming for. For goal number two, same goal as always, continue to create quality heartfelt content for heart breathings in order to grow my impact and income. And my targets are YouTube to 71, 73, or 75,000. Instagram just up a little bit to at least 14.4. And then I have another goal here for course income that's good, better, and best, Etsy income, good, better, best. So those are kind of always my goals, but the targets just keep increasing. Then for this final goal, I already see something since I was going over this that I'm going to change. So I'll have to look for my Apple pencil and change it, but similar type of thing. So I'm just setting all three goals like this, cultivate and create systems, habits, and routines that will support me and my vision for years to come. So one of the biggest changes that I'm making to this goal is I'm taking a step back from my heart breathings goal and I'm doing less over here so that I can get my systems in place. I want to hire a new potentially full-time employee and I have just, there's, I want to set some foundational things. So Renee and I are moving from Notion into Asana and there's just, we're trying to get our SOPs and other things in place so that we can, I can hire more people into my business. So I am taking a course from Amber McHugh called How to Clone Yourself, which is all about setting up those systems. So that is a majority of what's on this board is those systems. I also have exercise up here and time tracking, which is part of my systems. And I put my social media and meetings over here as well. So it's a little bit of a hodgepodge of a goal. And I wrote the targets down as weighing 170 pounds or less by June 30th. So I made it a weight loss goal again. And after today, going through that review with you, I've decided I don't really want to set a weight loss goal. I really would rather set like a feeling goal or an energy goal or an exercise goal. And I'm just not sure what that looks like. So I'm going to change that. But I want to have a decluttered, organized home an incredible new project manager that I'm going to hire and clear working systems in Asana. And those are my big goals for 
Q2. I've also made some changes to my ideal weekly schedule to add more time for outside time because I love this time of year to do more walking and other things like that to spend more time with family, to do more gaming in the evenings, less work in the evenings, and to have an entire day off in addition to all the travel that I'm doing, um, an entire day off every week. So usually I work at least a little bit, like even if it's just my planning on Sundays, I do something every day. And I just want to take Sundays completely off, like other than maybe meal prep and family time, walking, stuff like that. I just want to take the day off. I don't want to do any work. I don't want to record videos. I just want to take the day off for this quarter. So Sundays are off. So I have like 200 less task blocks this quarter than I had last quarter. Plus I'm traveling a lot. So we're going to see how it goes. I might get a lot less done and that will be okay. As long as the book is published and these systems are in place, I'm going to feel like it was a big win. Part of the projects I have for Heart Breathings is to redo and re-record my HB90 course. So if it seems by at the end of April, that is not a realistic goal for me. I'm actually just going to take it down off the board. So you might see this entire stack disappear. So something I also recommend and that I do often is I identify projects that can easily get pushed to next quarter if it feels like, okay, this isn't happening. So for this quarter, I pushed a Mirror of Shadows back to Q2. So it's back on the board for Q2. For Q2, I might push re-record of HB90 to Q3. So we'll see how it goes. But that is my quarterly reset. I hope you have enjoyed this quarterly reset. And I hope that no matter when you're getting started or if you're already off to the races, that you are feeling good about your goals coming up, that you're feeling excited. And I hope that you know that no matter what season of life you're in, you're exactly where you're meant to be. And most importantly, that you're exactly who you were meant to be. And the rest is just the cherry on top. So thank you for spending this time with me. I know these videos just continue to stay long and I think I'm just going to lean into long content this year. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, make sure you're subscribed and I will see you in my next video. Bye everybody.